Okay, we are on a bit of a brew today. This is a deck that is, if anything, just revolving around one single card. Propagator Primordium comes to us from the alchemy set for um, Mergers of Cholera Law of Manor, and this is a pretty good card. I've seen it in a, a few decks, and honestly, it's been kind of a hard thing to stop once it gets going. This is a 2-mana 3-3, three, three, which already is pretty sweet. Um, and on ETB, you generate two things in your graveyard. And basically, once you have this thing around for three turns, it will basically be able to bring a copy of itself back from the ba uh, back from the graveyard to the battlefield. And, you know, that copy is going to continue the cycle and so on and so forth. So this is actually kind of nuts, honestly. Um, I found that if you don't have the removal to kill it right away, you kind of can't do anything about it. Like, it'll just take over the game. Um, so we're basically going to try to see if we can do anything else with this fungus creature type, since it does target just the fungus, so anything else that uh, has that creature type is able to make use of its reanimation ability. But for the most part, this bringing back itself is pretty nuts. Um, but we do have some other funguses in this game. The Micro Tyrant for one. This was a somewhat recent card. Um, Akawali, the Seething Tower. This one's also a little bit recent. Um, and then Kami of Morning is not itself a fungus, but is a pretty good reanimation card that we're going to try to combo with this. <clears throat> this thing basically says that uh, some creature can come back from the graveyard to the battlefield when a creature larger than it dies. So if we put that on a Propagator Primordium and we're doing stuff with all these other cards and Propagator Primordium is bringing these things back, well, that's going to be really good for us. Kami of Morning should be able to get a Propagator Primordium loop going. Uh, Mycoid Resur Resurrection is uh, a card that will be pretty good in the late game if we can get a bunch of Propagator Primordiums to uh, multiply in the graveyard. This could just be a big overrun effect, much like the um, Crater of Behemoth is. And then finally, a card that uh, from original, uh, not original, um, the second time in Ravnica, I think Ravnica Allegiance, Molder Hulk, a card that I personally have never played, even though I did play standard and do a lot of drafting back in that day. Uh, never played this card. This thing was always a pass. Um, nine mana, six, six. That gets cheaper for every creature card in your graveyard. Well, when we're going to be conjuring two cards like this every time one of these enters, this could actually conceivably be just a Golgari spell uh, for six, for a 6-6. Six, six. And being able to get a land card from the graveyard to the battlefield is pretty sick when um, we do happen to be in Timeless and can run the uh, fetch lands, which are not in here right now, but I'm going to make a change to uh, add in just a moment. Um... Yeah, so basically that's what we're trying to do here. Um, we have Unearths to bring back the Propagator Primordiums, and we can bring back any one of these three drops as well, which are always going to be pretty solid for us. Fatal Pushes and Assassin's Trophy to make sure that uh, the board stays a little bit clear for us. And Spore Crown Thalid is our lord for Funguses and Saprlings, so we have that in here as well. Honestly, haven't played any uh, games with this. This is just kind of a build that I worked on after seeing a version of this deck playing Propagator Primordium. I wanted to see what fungus, uh, <laughs> what fungus cards we have here in Timeless, and uh, we definitely have a few of them. So I think without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into some games here. Um, I will make some quick changes here. Uh, number one, that I am realizing we do not have our uh, tutor. We need to, we, I mean, we're playing black. We might as well have this card in here. And I think I just drop a Molder Hulk for that because we don't need so many. And then finally, we need to uh, sacrif sacrifice search land, looking for lands to get our um, uh, to get our. I suppose I can choose any fetch land. Um, we may as well choose something that is going to indicate combo. So I'm going to go ahead and grab four polluted deltas in here, and then we will drop probably just a few basics here. And uh, not a huge fan of, um, where are they? I think it's the Death Cap Glades. We'll drop those. And then uh, I think a second Phyrexian Tower is good because uh, Phyrexian Tower being able to sack one of our three drops or more to trigger Propagator Primordium is something that we do want to do. Okay, so those are the changes that I want to make for the deck. Uh, go ahead, take your screenshots now. Of course, the deck list will be in the description, so you don't need to do that. But let's hop into some games here and see... What fungus is uh, 
have in store for us. This is, this is an archetype that I've never even conceived of playing, never thought that we had anything for it. Uh, but now with the printing of Propagator Primordium and honestly a few of these other decent cards as of late, we might have something to do here. Um, I have been wanting to make a Kami of Morning deck for I don't even know how long, uh, pretty much since this card was created in uh, on Arena. Should be a fun time today. Uh, make sure to like and comment on the video. Those YouTube things help me a bunch. And if you're new here, subscribe for videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now there's nothing else left to do other than to hop into round one. I'll see you there. Okay, we are in round one here. Initial hand doesn't have more than just the Propagator Primordium in the Kami of Morning, but honestly, that's kind of what we want. Uh, then if the Primordium is able to spawn a bunch of copies of itself, that does mean Molder Hulk can come down eventually. Opponent's on two mulligans, which makes me a little... Oh man, that's a lot of mulligans. We are looking at probably combo. Well, worst comes to worst, we might just get a free win here. Otherwise, we might just get comboed out. Could go either way. Let's see what ends up happening. I don't even know... How, oh, they take two here. It's Island. Um, well, we can go ahead and shuffle... Our library finding an overgrown tomb. If that was Stifle, I would have been really sad. Uh, Kami of Mourning. Well, I think I want that in my hand now. We can get uh, Propagator Primordium and Sporkhound Thalid uh, with that perpetual ability. That would be great. Here's a Primordium. Hidden Cataract as well. Discover four. Uh, wonder what the combo is here. Not totally sure what I'm seeing. Maybe they're just on a challenge to see if they can win from nothing. Oh, it's just Seek New Knowledge. Wow. Um, who knows why they mulligan this hard. I wonder what they're looking for. All right, well, that's a Spore Counter on our Propagator. Let's go ahead and get our Kami of Mourning in, giving our Propagator Primordium its uh, ability and now when the Kami dies and the Propagator dies we get another Propagator back. Kami of Morning can also uh, target one of the Primordiums in my graveyard which actually just might be better. Oh this is a Thassa's Oracle combo deck. I see what we're doing here. Okay very good to know. Um, well, here's an Overgrown Tomb. We'll just put that in tapped Kami of Mourning, targeting our other Propagator Primordium in the Graveyard. Uh, let's go ahead and choose one of these cards in the Graveyard. Bang, bang. We'll attack in. We would offer trade for the Kami of Mourning if uh, it was an option, but it doesn't even look like it's going to be. This game might end up being over before we get to really show what the uh, Propagator Primordiums are capable of. And it looks like that's going to be the case. Kind of a non-game, honestly. So I'm going to go ahead and real quick try to uh, roll one back. We'll just hop right back into the queue and see if we can get a uh, match off. Kind of an interesting combo that opponent was going for. Thassa's Oracle is a very unique thing to see in Timeless and Historic because we really do lack a lot of the cards that uh, make those kinds of decks good. But honestly, plus one for opponent to try it. I have really been wanting to, I've been on the lookout for a list that is semi-good that I could conceivably play in Historic or uh, Timeless. Uh, mulliganing that hand, didn't really like what I see. Um, Aquawali does get pretty big eventually. The Micro Tyrant's also pretty solid. Um, I think that we don't really have too many ways to descend currently. And Mycoid Resurrection really doesn't do anything. I think I mulligan this one, honestly, go to five. And I don't think I'd go further than that here, so we got to return two cards. I think I want the Micro Tyrant. I think I probably just want two creatures. And then maybe we yellow it on finding a third land. Cool. We'll have two draws, or three draws actually, to find our third land before it starts to hurt us. Right, there is our third land, perfect. We'll put this in tapped. Wow, what a library. Uh, so a 250 card deck, maybe they're just going for one of their weekly challenges. <coughs> Who knows, scheming symmetry, oh boy. Um, well, I think we probably want our Propagator Primordium. They are gonna have to search for a long, long time to get through that, that is kind of funny. 
Uh, unfortunately, it would be nice if we could just search together, but it doesn't look like that's a thing that uh, the client is able to do yet. Here's a Propagator Primordium. Let's put that on top. We will draw it for turn, and probably that will be our play, honestly. This kind of strikes me as, hello, Seagate Reborn. All right, what is going on over there? There's a Propagator. We got some stuff in our graveyard. Seems good. Search for his content. Kind of important to them. And a Lotus Field as well. We get a Spore Counter here and we get to start going in. Um, I think we probably just want to have the Micro Tyrant eventually. But I think Akawali is best. Alright, we attack in. And then uh, we want to eventually uh, get one of these Propagator Primordiums in. That will give us the additional... Um, the additional descend on Akawali. Scheming Symmetry, we just get to search for another card. I mean, I could just take a Propagator Primordium or I could get a Kami of Mourning. I think Kami of Mourning is better. I can cast both. They see Wilderness Reclamation. Submit. We've seen Wilderness Reclamation, Soul Tide, surprisingly. Um, we'll play this, we'll play Kami of Mourning. I really don't know what's going on, but we will uh, target one of these creatures in the graveyard to bring it back. And I mean, now we just come for six, like, I mean, we'll take it. Um, we have the opportunity, if we want to, to Fatal Push something when it comes in. They have four mana here. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, do not care. And we're not really even going to care when we block either. <clears throat> All right, so we get to move to our turn here. We will go ahead and play this. Um, let's make it green mana, and we can go ahead and attack in. We'll go ahead and activate Propagator Primordium right now. We'll take the one that doesn't have the Kami of Mourning uh, thing on it. And we'll make two more things. That puts three things into the graveyard. We can go, unfortunately, not get Akawali to four because we took something out of the graveyard. Opponent goes to four themselves. We'll play the Micro Tyrant because why not? And Fatal Push can just chill here. We'll end turn. Uh, and there's some more funguses for us. Always good to descend. Um, and uh, permanent cards coming into the graveyard from anywhere do include the Conjuring into the graveyard, as you can see from there. Opponent's got a one ring. That is okay. Can only help them so much. Well, I suppose we just kind of chill here. More spore counters on our primordiums. Assassin's Trophy would be cool to kill the One Ring. We can kill their Azkanta, I suppose. That took them a while to set up. They could Spell Pierce. We can pay for it. It is actually going to be a hard counterspell, sure. And, I mean, at this point, they're just looking for some sort of kill slash exile the board effect going to be a hard thing to find in this 250 card deck. They'll look too deeper, and I'm hoping that they do not find what they're looking for. They also died of their one ring in the upkeep, so uh, they need to find a lot here. Looking for something in the graveyard that's going to be Uro. Uro does get them to survive. Resolve everything. Now, I mean, they're going to kill something with Uro. <coughs> Probably our Micro Tyrant, I would say. Okay, Spelunking is decent. This is just 250 card lands, I guess. Okay, cool. They decided that they're out of there. Uh, I think that we got to kind of show what we wanted to do here. Um, definitely kind of got an easier matchup <laughs> and was able to demonstrate things. 
But I mean, having this, uh, having this micro tyrant get bigger with all the descending that we're doing, we got to see Propagator Primordium start to move. Tommy of Morning on Propagator Primordium happened twice. I mean, these are the things that we want to be doing with this deck, and uh, they're happening. So that, if nothing else, is a good indication of where we're at. But we have four more games to see here, and hopefully those will go similarly well. But anyways, I'll see you in round two. All right, here we go. We've taken a hand of seven here. Um, I've decided to take Sporkron Thalid. Uh, plus Kami of Morning. I think that's probably a solid thing that we can do. And this will be a good test to see if uh, that is in fact the case. We get the Surveil here. Uh, having a fourth land would be great, but I think there's other stuff that we want to find. Uh, it does help us with Akawali though, which is nice. This thing ends up becoming extremely valuable for just three mana. Hopefully we will be able to be there before long. Um, stomping Ground, it is what it is. Let's go for one of these. And then this, I guess, is just Spork Ground Solid. Hopefully will not be a big, <coughs> big um, target for my opponent because we do need to make sure that it chills for a little bit. If they give me the indication that they are on an aggressive spell-based damage deck, then I think that, I mean, either way, Kami of Warning is a good play, so that's probably what I do next turn. Looks like they're thinking about damage. <clears throat> this is fine. Um, we still get to Kami of Morning, and then we'll target the Spork Crown Thalid. So that's good. Even if they kill the Kami of Morning, I get it back. This could be a situation where I go Demonic Tutor plus Assassin's Trophy, the Rogrin Triome. That puts them off of two colors of mana. This might be four color Omnath or something similar. And we will wait here for them to make their turn. They're thinking. I just had to shock in here. Which is really interesting. Um, I'll play my fourth land. Attempt to attack. That just happens. Well, it's Assassin's Trophy trying to take out their uh, Rogren Triumph. That would put them off of white now. And we'll have to see if they just play Counter Magic. I think we probably want our Propagator Primordium next turn. They're really taking a, uh, their sweet time to decide if they want this Assassin's Trophy to resolve. Couldn't really tell you why. <laughs> they are thinking about it. We can see them hovering. They are in the game still. <clears throat> Uh, Veil of Summer is a card that's played. They could be deciding whether or not to do Veil of Summer. Good to know. So we can expect some sort of interaction, whether that be a counterspell or something else. We'll attempt Demonic Tutor here, which they may counter. I think they probably held up a counter, though actually now they may not be able to cast it unless it's a memory lapse. Okay, cool. Well, maybe we just played around something by accident, but I'm getting a Propagator Primordium because that is our MO here. And here's some more mana. Let's make, we can make two black here with the other, or sorry, two green with the Overgrown Tomb. Oh, that's actually a mistake because now I can't cast both, both of these. What a mistake. Anyway, there's a Propagator. Let's see if that's allowed to resolve. Yeah, the idea was uh, we primarily need black, but uh, we will have two green. But unfortunately, I need two green this turn. We'll get in, put them to 12 here, and now Propagator is starting to do their thing. Akawali is now a 5-5 with Trample for just three mana. And we draw the other one of those. <clears throat> I'm going to not make the same mistake here and shock the Overgrown Tomb. We will attack in. Dingham to six. Here's another Propagator Primordium. Can you deal with it? 
Looks like you can. So that is counter spell here. We will attempt now our Akawali, which is now six out of eight. That is a five five with trample for three mana. Oh yeah. If they blow up the board, Kami of Mourning will still trigger on the other Propagator Primordium, so we'll at least have a bit of a board still. This is instead Uro, just to gain some life and hopefully get them close to the Field of the Dead, but we do have lethal now, don't we? So they'll have to find Swords to Plowshares, which they may cast on their own Uro here. Okay, Tail's End, sure. Um, we have to do this, and now actually this is a Molder Hulk. Do we have anything in the graveyard yet? We can take back a Polluted Delta, which I think is a good call. Let's do that. We'll turn back our Polluted Delta. Let's activate Polluted Delta, put some, put that back into the graveyard, and we'll get a Underground Mortuary, which we can surveil away. Well, an Unearth would be good. That actually gets us to our um, Akawali total. So I think that we just go with the Kami of Mourning here, pick one of them out of the grave, and then just start to gain value Primordium style. Seems good to me. Maybe I'll block with the Kami of Mourning. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So then, what are my targets in the graveyard still? Oh, but you know what I'm thinking? Oh yeah, this is what comes back, not the... Oh, you know what I can do? I can um, attack with Kami, unearth it on the next turn. I don't know, I'm thinking too much into this. Um, I will not surveil and then i will not attack right now we can block an arrow attack here they have one two three four five six unique lands we'll need to make another land drop here with the arrow probably makes sense to not activate uh the polluted delta yet they may be looking for something important here reading primordium trying to figure out what the combo is i see them flickering between both of those so they can definitely understand that there's some sort of interaction there. We have some pretty large creatures here. I just want to get this Aqua Wally to the next level. And Teferi's going to tick up. It's a little scary as to what they might have. They probably plus and then go for Uro. I think they're really just trying to hit this Field of the Dead this turn. Alright, so there's the Teferi, and then they probably go to attacks, so hoping to play a, a new land. Seeing them polluted delta right now probably means that they found it, so we should expect some Field of the Dead triggers going off this turn. Okay. Sure. Pull on top two lands, we get to move to our turn here. There is a Spore Cowder on the Propa, Propagator Primordium. Um... So now how do I want to do this? We're definitely starting by reanimating one of these. That's going to put us down to seven cards, I believe. And we need one more in order to get Akawali working. So let's go ahead and unearth. I don't really want to do the Spore Crown Thalid. I think we'll take another Propagator Primordium. And so now Akawali can only be blocked by one creature, which is Uro, and um, that means that we will get into Teferi Land. I'm going to counter my spell. Okay, that's unfortunate. We're going to lock the way in here, taking a look at a card. And okay, that is a Spore Crown Thalid. <clears throat> That does mean that we can trade. Okay, now we cannot trade. Um, I think that I am just all attacking here into Teferi. They'll be able to take a trade on, or they'll be able to get a good uh, deal on Akawali. Oh, maybe they won't. Yeah, they will. Okay. We will get a Spore Crown Thalid back, though, which is good. I'll have a better plan next time. Our stuff's bigger than Teferi now, or at least the Molder Hulk is. Domain on the Molder Hulk, interesting. <clears throat> Our silver from Ravnica. Looking very scary to them. I think I want to play this. We will do our Lockblane. 
and that is a propagator primordium. We just begin to edge out value um, while our opponent kind of just sits there not being able to do much about it. They decide to concede. I'm not sure we necessarily had it there. Um, they block a 5-5, five five, then they take 8. Oh, they do actually just take lethal there. So cool, looks like we ended up having it with the uh, double spore crown thalids. Pretty sweet. Honestly, I'm very surprised with how this deck is doing. Kind of thought that it would be getting bowled over, especially by control decks like this. Um, but with the with the uh, kind of lapse in seeing a lot of blue-white base control and things that are playing like the four mana board wipes, I think that this is actually not necessarily a terrible strategy. Um, I'm kind of finding success so far with it. But it's only been two rounds so far, so we'll see if that luck lasts. Here comes round three. Okay, here we are in round three. We have what actually is a pretty cool hand. We get to do a turn two Propagator Primordium into Sporkhound Thalid plus another Propagator Primordium from the graveyard. And oh my god, there's a fourth one. Yeah, I think I kind of like where this is going. <clears throat> Opponents on some green elves. I am kind of scared how this is going to go. So let's get a Primordium out. There's some Primordiums in the graveyard. And we're going to start getting our Akawali big, which is great. I hope that we can block like one or two instances of uh, their attacks here. This is Gwena Eyes of Gaia. This is... Maybe not supposed to trigger. I don't really know how they expect to get a bunch of 5-5s five here with all these elves they're playing, but we'll see. Here's a Locked Wayne. We go for Sporkron Thalid plus Unearth. Unearth, we take back a Propagator Primordium. They can trade here if they'd like. I don't think they do. Cool. Good to threaten them a little bit at the very least. This next turn we can do two more Propagator Primordiums and then my god, this is going to be a big, um, a big field. So that's not great. Okay, they kind of wasted a Crater Hoof here though. That's 18 damage. Um, I'm not too crazy about going to one. We'll block uh, with one of the Propagators. But yeah, we're at five now. Uh, this was actually a huge draw. We need that second green mana. And yeah, it's just got to be two of these guys. Akawali will be big, but I don't think we have enough creatures to survive here now. Uh, we can block four things. We take one, two, three, four, five, exactly. That's unfortunate. So opponents got us here if they attack all in. Let's just make them uh, show us they know what's up. Surprise Crater Hoof here, honestly. This is just kind of non-standard elf ramp. Not really sure what we're playing. I mean, we are kind of just in Platinum 1 right now. Oh. Um, this requires us to block a lot, but do we survive still? Kill that. Block this. Block that? Yeah, we survive with one. Okay. I mean, I'll take it, but uh, I don't think we really do anything from here. And anyway, it's a board of nothing versus uh, all this stuff. Overgrown Tomb does nothing. We can play a Cami of Mourning, bringing back who knows what. But honestly, that's not quite enough. All right, well, I mean, look at our graveyard. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 Propagator Primordiums in the graveyard. Look at that. That is a sight to behold right there. That's going to have to maybe be the thumbnail. Um, anyway, we're not blocking here. Opponent's got us. Um, and after my touting of how well the deck was doing in round two, we kind of just got mushed in round three. You know, you give and you take, right? Um, anyway, round four coming up right now. Let's get in there. All right, here we go. Round four. We have a Primordium in hand. And we do have a Micro Tyrant. That is not terrible. It would be kind of good if we could play the Primordium after the Micro Tyrant, though. I guess we could turn two Propagator Primordium, turn three Micro Tyrant, turn four Gemonic Tutor. And that'd be pretty good. All right. For that reason, I keep this hand. And then Assassin's Trophy is just kind of a little uh, break if I need to hit it. 
That is a lot of dark ritual. Key to the archive. Okay. Um, yeah, interesting. They take something from here. <clears throat> That'll be an ornithopter as well. So I don't know what's going on here, but now we have an unearth as well to pair with all this stuff. So it will be pretty good if we can... Um, Okay, I'm not even going to say anything here. Uh, I think it's going to be good if we can just kind of sink on Earth after the Micro Tyrant comes down. Polluted Delta is a permanent in the graveyard, so I think I will just put that down there. We have three lands so far, which is probably enough. We have three more draws to find another. I'm sure we will. The other Ornithopter here. Don't know what they're doing, honestly. They've ramped some, but what do they really do with it? I'm kind of curious. Uh, we'll play this on black here. I'm going for the Primordium. We'll just set that up. They hold mana up here with Key to the Archive and two more lands. That's four mana total. Could we Beseech the Mirror Sacking and Ornithopter? I almost think that's the case. Maybe the idea is just Ornithopter drain me for a little bit. Nope, in fact, it's just going to be a Lightning Bolt. Okay, so they're doing pretty much nothing. We can unearth plus demonic tutor, maybe? Oh, there's a one ring, so they now draw a bunch of cards. <clears throat> maybe we take a turn, set up a micro tyrant thing. Um, we should be able to go pretty ham with them. So we start with micro tyrant, then we unearth and demonic tutor for yet another primordium. The best draw here would be a uh, Propagator Primordium itself. Karn the Great Creator is going to be a problem. Liquid Metal Coating would kind of hurt me pretty badly. There it is. Okay, so what do we do here? We need to unearth something. We probably need another land. I think I need to kill Karn, unearth my creature back. So, Assassin's Trophy on Karn. They do ramp a little bit, which is not great. That means Liquid Metal Coating doesn't necessarily do anything till another Karn comes down. Uh, now we have Unearth, taking back a Primordium. That's a lot of cards in the graveyard. Micro Tyrant gets bigger. We descend twice. We attack in, see if they want to block, see if that life total is important to them. Seems to not be. Microtyrant gets bigger. Okay, well, Passage comes down. What do they have on 7 mana? I'm pretty scared. <clears throat> Metalwork Colossus. They have a 10-10. Alright. Well, that's pretty gnarly. Not a card I've ever really seen in Historic or Timeless for that matter. Another Ornithopter. So this is actually just uh, Affinity, but not in blue. <clears throat> so the 1010 is going to be a problem. Cami of Mourning is pretty solid. We can use that to bring back a Primordium right now. Let's do that. <clears throat> Uh, they will need to click something here, let that, that happen. Let's target a Propagator Primordium in the grave. And uh, yeah, unfortunately no little one ones coming down just yet. We will need to chump this Metalwork Colossus. Demonic Tutor. It would be nice if they don't attack and then I can attack my Kami of Mourning into the Metalwork Colossus. That'd be great. That'd just be perfect. But I think they just go for a Karn here and then Liquid Metal Coating me. That sucks. Yeah, that's 100% what they do. They have the mana to do it as well. Yep, makes sense. Now the question is, do I survive from this point? I really don't know.
There goes my peatland. There goes Karn, and I think they probably don't attack with Colossus. Attacking with Colossus would just be kind of silly. They are getting close on this one ring, though. They're going to be at 8. How close am I on my quick resurrection? Um, definitely not. Cost 6. <laughs> and we need to go a little bit further for this Molder Hulk to do what we need it to do. So they have perfect information about this next turn. They decide to attack. Um, I could go to 6. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind going to 6. I think I need to not do anything because I need the Kami to die in my turn. We get a spore counter. They draw. Our card was in fact another land. <clears throat> that means that we can demonic tutor now. Uh, we actually do want to land on top. And we'll demonic tutor here for a assassin's trophy. We'll deal with the other Karn. And maybe we can stabilize from here. Let's go attack all in. And then we have to decide where we would like to go. Probably not all in, actually. <clears throat> yeah, we do need to block. We can trade for the Metalwork Colossus unless they remove something. We do get burnt out by what is most likely going to be a Tendrils kill if they have it. They can just Beseech four times and Tendrils me. I will not lose oh, <clears throat> they decided to go for the Karn. It looks Reservoir, sure. How do they win? I don't know what you can do to cast infinite spells here. Here comes some blue stuff. Here comes a Brainstorm. Wish I was playing Bowmasters. We're not that type of black deck, though. Acre Wellspring. Yes. So I don't see their win con yet. It's clearly Aetherflux Reservoir. <coughs> they kind of just crammed Artifact Storm into <laughs> what is actually just a so many color deck. I don't really get why they played Key to the Archive. I assume that's where they got their, um... Okay, so... I have to block here. It's probably going to be the Cami of Mourning. Yep. We're going to get something back here. <coughs> There's some more Primordiums. We have a big Micro Tyrant. We're actually going to have... A potential for two spells next turn. Alright, Spore Counter. Let's go. Fatal Push. Fortunately, cannot kill the Metalwork Colossus. That thing's way too big. Um, well, if I do this, we have a blocker. We have not seen that they would have uh, the ability to murder something yet. Karn probably needs to be killed, so I think I'm doing that regardless. And then I guess I just go face. I'm a little scared of going completely to the face here, though. We'll leave back the Primordium that um, we'll come back for free, just in case we need to do something like that. Okay, cool. And uh, what we can actually do is, <clears throat> at instant speed, we can, if we're going to lose Primordium before blocks, we can kill our Micro Tyrant and bring it back, and then it can block. Except, no, it comes back tapped. Hmm. Uh, we do want to kill these things, make the metal work a little less good. Alright, now we pass. We get two... Make our board a little bigger. The Micro Tyrant is an 8 8 now. That's great. Dark Ritual. That's always scary to see. You got it.
We're still pretty close to death in, I think, a lot of ways. Opponent gets chunked for five next turn. <laughs> Ristic study, what the heck? <laughs> uh, is this a commander deck? What am I playing? That's not actually true, is it? No, we've seen multiple dark rituals, so we're not going to get Thassa's Oracle here. <laughs> I'm genuinely confused, honestly. Uh, they could find a Fatal Pusher. That is a thing that can happen. Forsaken Monument. Now Metalwork Colossus is just straight up enormous. But it doesn't have Trample, so we stay alive. So I guess they attack in here, we will block. And this crackback's actually gonna be really strong. Yeah, they can't attack here. I get to go to my turn, sweet. Uh, Propagator Primordiums, they are gonna bring back some more friends here soon. And we are moving up in the land department. Has to be just a Molder Hulk here. We will get to return a land back. And I will pay the one for this. <clears throat> no cards for you. And let's take back a Polluted Delta, I think. We can search out a uh, Surveil land, or we can get uh, a mana to pay for the Rhystic. Uh, we're definitely not doing anything here, and I think the Micro Tyrant um, is not really worth it. I'd rather have the Surveil for card selection. <coughs> Field of the Dead is on. That's not really something I was immediately considering. Dark Ritual. Sure, I think this deck's just playing like every win con possible. What's going on? There's Karn once again, okay. We will need to find removal for Mr. Karn. We might just need to throw everything at Karn next turn. We will really only just lose one mana here. <coughs> one ring, they got protection, so we just send everything at Karn, easy. Cosmos Elixir, okay. Sure. <coughs> They're looking for that Karn activation. Okay. This thing is a three mana spell. I hope you know that. Okay, that makes more sense. What does Karn find? Probably something that's bad for me. Paradox Engine, so that's how they plan to go infinite with Aetherflux Reservoir. I may need to attempt to find another Assassin's Trophy. <coughs> so we'll go ahead and look for a Surveil Land here, and then I'm considering giving them a mana. Oh, I guess at this point we might just uh, kill with Fatal Push. If I attack with the three Primordiums plus Molder Hulk... That does guarantee Karn's death. Even just the three Primordiums does. Alright. So we won't Fatal Push. We'll hold that. They have to discard. We've avoided giving them card selection. And they actually only have 14 cards left. So they're going to need to find a way to win. Spore Crown Thalid is actually just straight huge right now. That is exactly what we'd like to see. Uh, I think we'll let them... Eh, no, I guess we don't have this. Um, we will go in for one, two, three at face, and then just put a bunch of these at them directly, and I suppose Molder Hulk. Well, 
Yeah, we'll just go like this. Close to being able to do micro tyrant stuff. We'll wait for blockers to activate our primordiums. They take the one that only has two, that makes sense. And they go for a trade here, sure. We can allow this to happen. But yeah, it is. Oh, they also just have protection, so why do they attack all in? I guess these don't really matter. Anyway, uh, this doesn't need to be done at a at instant speed, right? So this, or that can be done at instant speed. So we will want to do that, except we want to trigger micro tyrant. So that's going to happen now. There goes that. Trigger, trigger. We are almost as big as the metalwork losses, and in fact, after this, um, after this goes down, we definitely will be. So we'll end turn here. We are looking good. One more land and we get to Mycoid Resurrection for straight up so much. I want to see it happen. That would be so cool. Alright, they make another field with the dead. Sure. Paradox Engine. Like, this is the one thing that maybe kills me. Ooh, double Aether Flux, that's not good. They might hit 50 this turn. We are so close. So, so very close. I just hope they run out of mana. 41. I think they hit it here now. Dang, we were so close. They just have 4 mana left. They can for sure cast something. Yeah, they, they're not even being efficient with their keys to the Archive. Uh, it's all good. They have it. Super brutal. That's going to be lethal here. Uh, after they cast like this Ornithopter or whatever this last card is. Well, we gave it a try. We came extremely, extremely close. This was uh, really, really solid. Um, kind of a wonky deck that we played against, but you know, a win is a win. We will let that happen. Uh, we'll show them the Fatal Push uh, just so they know what they were playing around. Uh, didn't really seem to matter here. Uh, we will go ahead and take that in. Let's the face. All right, so that was round four. Pretty hard fought game. 18 minutes in total for the recording. That's been the longest one so far. Definitely we are doing what we want to be doing, which feels really good. Like, there's a lot of brews that I make where I feel like the deck really doesn't do what I was hoping that it would, <laughs> which is uh, definitely not where you want your deck to be. But this is definitely pretty opposite to that. Feels really nice. Well, with that being said, here comes the last round. This is round five. All right, fifth and final round. Let's go. Um, I don't really like the idea of having two Molder Hulks in my initial hand, so we will go back. And this one's not too bad. I'll keep this. What to discard, though? Probably just this basic. We look like we're going to be on a slower kind of plan today. So we can go Sporkrod Thalid, Kami of Morning on Sporkrod Thalid, and then when they kill something, we unearth it back. Sounds good. Get rid of the basic. Here we go. Play Mortuary. Oh, that's a lot of Ley Lines. Um, I actually did play a pretty cool Ley Lines build with um, this Rakdos. It's the Rakdos 3 mana spell from uh, the, the online only card. A very interesting deck. We'll have to see if we're playing against it today. Seeing forest kind of makes me think that we might be actually. Um, let's shock here. Go for the solid. Seiju. All right. Don't have a th turn three play yet. We need to get an untapped land here. I'll pay too late for that. Let's go, Cami here. in there and then we do need to find a way to descend it might be micro tyrant then play mortuary try to surveil uh, permanent into the graveyard uh, they have ley line binding available if that's in their deck i think we'll probably just do micro tyrant now we can go polluted delta into another mortuary our third and final one that gives us the most out of this guy with the delta 
bang. And then hopefully, oh, wow, there's only one mortuary, that's right. Well, let's put in a, we don't have anything uh, to reanimate, right? Yeah, so this is gonna be a tapped overgrown tomb. Alrighty, well, we get to hit for five. Hopefully that is not great for them. We'll get one little guy and that feels good. So this is seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're very close to damage. And it looks like we're there, wow. Uh, two minute game, not really good enough for me. I'm gonna go ahead and move to the next one. Um, we'll just go ahead and record round five one extra time here, get an actual decent game in for you guys. Alrighty. So, we would really love to find something in the first 15 seconds. It's a little bit late at night here, so it's, uh, hopefully not going to be too long of a queue. If it goes past, like, 20, 30 seconds, alright, cool. Just got there in time. Fifth and final round, re-record, take number two, let's get it. So, Propagator Primordium, Unearth, yeah, I like this. Only two mana, though. If we don't get our third mana by the time we can play a Propagator Primordium, I will play it, but I do want to hold it for uh, Micro Tyrant once that's on the battlefield. Because uh, Micro Tyrant plus Propagator Primordium, and then the next turn double unearth, my god, that's going to hit. Probably need to play this on black. Brainstorm there getting right ahead with this DRC. Once that thing starts flying, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to need to be the more aggressive deck. Flooded Strand doing their thing. That is the still the second type here. Do they have a bobble yet? They do not. I'm expecting a bobble at some point. So this next land drop will be interesting. I'm glad that that bolt went to my face. <clears throat> so no land drop here. We need to play black. We need to play Propagator Primordium. Possibly, if we get lucky and draw land here, it's Micro Tyrant. Then the next turn, double unearth. I think even if they kill the Primordium right now, I don't unearth it yet. I want to save for Micro Tyrant. Because getting a wide board like that will just be so strong. There goes the crack. Um, they might be trying to treasure cruise. And it's a Monastery Swift Spear. Okay. I gotta decide if it's worth it to unearth right now. I think it's not. If we draw another card and it's not a land next turn, then I will consider it. Little awkward just sitting here doing nothing while the opponent gets ready to kill me. But we live for the payoff. There's the treasure cruise I was thinking of. They retain two cards in library. You got it. So this hand gets a lot worse if I don't draw my third land. Really hoping for the heart of the cards here.
<laughs> it's kind of feeling like a Phoenix deck. Oh, as I say that. So, probably some Phoenix is coming down. We're going to get hit for six. We really do need this land. Like, there's no tomorrow. Even if we do find it, are we okay? Not totally sure. Um, was that three instant or sorcery spells? I can't tell. Well, we're going to eat Ragavan. We go to 10. Okay, that could have been worse. Come on land, yes. All right, Micro Tyrant. You gotta pray to be able to block here. And uh, yeah, this next turn will be the one. I mean, a shock pretty much kills us though. Them being able to bring back the um, Arclight Phoenix also kind of kills us. Maybe I kind of overstated how far back we were. Micro Tyrant dies, that sucks. Yeah, okay, maybe this is not so great. Faithless looting. We might just be done for. Oh, a second Arc Light Phoenix? That's going to be it. Alright, well, I think it's uh, definitely worth playing a game against a tier, tier 1, tier 0 deck. Just to kind of see where you really stack up because i mean this is kind of like the platinum area in the ladder it's not necessarily the most competitive uh, but you do get a pretty good wide interaction with a lot of different types of decks i think overall this deck was really really fun i think you could probably just play this in historic or something like that um, in one of those similar formats and do all right maybe not timeless caliber just yet but with some tweaks and some new printings maybe it could be so Definitely would encourage you guys to keep this one on the fringes of your mind and as new cards come up Keep this one in your thoughts because I know I definitely will I would love to see this deck um, pop off here in the future With that being said that brings us to the end of round five where we've had uh, more than just five games today a couple re-recordings that uh, Ended up I think overall being a great series So I hope you guys enjoyed as well Make sure to like and comment on the video to help with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you're new for videos every Monday Wednesday and Friday that's all for me, and I will be back when I have a new deck to show you guys. Peace out.